shit has hit the fan and Clive, well, he has to move on on his own. Sid was injured and has been left behind. Clive is moving forward. He's got to chase down Benedicta and, well, there's going to be a few other uh, obstacles in his way. So it's kind of like a little bit of a, a rite of passage in a sense for this character because up until this point, he has been fighting sort of as part of a team. You know, when he was fighting, uh, when he was fighting Jill earlier on in the game, he, like, she's just powerful. Uh, even if she didn't have the ability at that point to turn she into Shiva, she still had powerful magics, and she seemed to have been pretty good with a sword, too. But he was fighting along with the other members of whatever that team of other bears were called. And then we move forward and, like, okay, you fight some minor enemies and stuff, but, you know, when you get into the more uh, dangerous places, Sid is there, and Sid is a dominant. Sid is a very powerful individual in his own. But Sid has been removed from the equation, and Clive has to move on on his own. So it's finally time for him to really show what he's made out of. Now, of course, he's not entirely alone, and I suppose we haven't really seen a point in this game. Oh, you know what? No, never mind. Maybe during the side quest I did a while ago. But we haven't... I'll just stick with this. We haven't really seen a point where he has been operating on his own. But he does have Torgal with him. So, Torgal is going to help him fight. But, you know, dog. Regardless of being a big dog or not. <laughs> he's a dog. But pretty much, he's going to be the one that has to do this. Of course... It is pretty obvious that, I think anyway, it's pretty obvious. If I'm wrong about this, I'm going to feel like a real dumbass. But it seems pretty obvious to me that that Clive himself is also a dominant. Just he's one that doesn't or hasn't come to understand his own power. Of course, what does that really make him? Because if a dominant doesn't change into an icon... Are they any more powerful than a standard bear? I mean, both dominants and bears have the ability to cast magic, and maybe there's like some differences in terms of their abilities based on talent or whatever, but is by nature of that a dominant going to have more power than a bear if they choose or if they're not capable of turning into the icon itself? I don't know. I'm asking questions. Perhaps these are things that I'll never even get answers to. I'm running out of tower. And, and um, anyway, uh, we haven't really seen Sid turn into like, well, like when we saw when we saw Shiva, when we saw Jill as Shiva. He had full-on Shiva. Looks like the other incarnations of this summon creature from the earlier games when we saw titan big giant we saw sid turn into rama he didn't turn into sort of like the robed lightning dude that we had seen in the um, earlier games he was just sort of sid but sort of covered with a glow and same thing with um well i, I don't know what the hell i don't know what Benedicta is turning into. She, like, that's got to be a new summon creature for the sake of this game. So, I don't know what that's really supposed to look like, but she still looks like her. She just has wings on her back, and she's got kind of a glow. So, there's... a difference there? I don't know. Maybe that's not really, that's not, okay, maybe that's not them turning into the, that's not them turning into the icon itself, that's just them using a greater amount of their power. So, okay, yeah, I just answered my own question. There is a difference between, there is a difference between a bearer and a dominant if a dominant doesn't turn into the icon. They have these more powerful forms, like greater expression of their power. I don't know thrown away. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> Working things out. 
So Clive's got a little ways to go. I'm probably going to speed the video up during the next battle so we don't have to get hung up watching that as I try to figure out something to talk about. We just have to get up there and get ourselves into a boss battle. Hmm. Uh, how do you know your way around here, buddy? Oh, here's a mini boss, I guess. <laughs> I'm speeding things up so that way we can get through these battles quicker. I, I guess at this point was the was when I realized that I had easy mode turned on and turned it off. So this battle was more of a challenge because I just wasn't used to having to mix up the attacks, manage the cooldowns, actually learn how to dodge. <laughs> a little late in the game for me to be figuring that crap out because I had easy mode on. But, you know, eventually I got there. <laughs> Surprisingly tough guy for someone who's not a dominant. I guess the bearers can be pretty powerful on their own. Shame they're not treated particularly well in this world. Anyway, moving on. we got to be getting pretty close, aren't we? I mean, I should know. I'm looking at the timeline of the video as it's ticking across. I do notice that they put these items around just as a, oftentimes it's like just a couple of gill or something like that. And it seems to just sort of be a trail of bread breadcrumbs to lure the player forward so they know like, oh, well, this is an area you haven't been in yet because here's an item that if you were here, you would have picked it up already. So it's like, oh, an item. I'm going the right way. Keep going that way. It's kind of necessary considering like so many of these environments look the same. When you have such a realistic or high level of detail, things can start to look similar. So this is a little clumsy and a little obvious, but it, it works. Jeez, dude, how much more up do you gotta go? Yeah, here we go. I confess I expected more from the old man. And less from you. This is the second time you've bested my sisters. Men of your talents are rare indeed. Why cost your lot with such undesirables? If it is the hearth you long for, you will find more than enough warmth under my wings. You know exactly what I want. Hand over the Dominant, and I'll leave you in peace. You would dare to make demands of me. Know your place, little lamb. Fool is the shepherd who heats every bleat of the flock. And I will suffer yours no longer. <laughs> Must I spell it out for you, Branded? No one is listening. No one at all! Ah! Come, little lamb. To the slaughter with you. So Clive has reached his biggest challenge yet. He's fighting Benedicta, a true dominant with her. Well, I mean, he fought Jill, who was dominant as well. But Jill had been exhausted by her previous fight with Titan, so she couldn't uh, transform. Benedicta here isn't transforming, however. She's just uh, using her sword and casting magic and stuff. Probably because she doesn't really take Clive seriously here. She sees him as just a bearer or a branded, she calls him, and thinks like, ah, well, he's, I could just tear him apart as it is. Although she does, she has um, noted some measure of surprise that he was able to survive the sisters that Benedict has summoned to kill him. You'd think, though, that would cause her to take him a little bit more seriously. Even without her transforming, she does appear to be quite powerful. I mean, look at the crap she's casting around. 
And I guess she's pretty good with the sword, too. Although she's not relying on it nearly as much. And we do have Torgo helping us out, so it's not maybe it's not a fair fight. <laughs> Jeez, she staggered for a long time. I took off like 20% of her health during that staggered event. Oh. Yeah, I was still trying to figure out the, the dodging mechanics. <laughs> Because, you know, I was cheating earlier and didn't realize it. Didn't realize I wasn't actually learning how to play the game. Seriously, he manages to beat her while she's not using this greater measure of her power. So she's like, okay, sprout her wings, start flying around, and cast even more powerful magics. And it is in this form that she had defeated Sid, so clearly she's quite a powerhouse like this. Um, still doesn't quite... Look, well, I don't know. I mean, th this... What the hell was the name of her son in the future? Her, her icon. I, I don't know. But it's a it's a different one. Um, I don't think there were any... Oh, you know what? I guess maybe this is like Siren. You've seen Siren in um, Final Fantasy VIII. And I guess maybe in some of the other ones, I just don't recall. Where... Kind of like a... Yeah ancient Greek this concept of sirens where a woman half bird but in Final Fantasy 8 she had wings sprouting out of her head and she would play music now I don't see Benedicta playing a lute or anything like that but she does have wings so maybe it's like siren maybe that's the uh, icon she's supposed to turn into Oh, staggered her. <laughs> you do a lot of damage in this game once the stagger happens, but you just gotta, you gotta, um, and I didn't really understand this at the time, but you gotta sort of link together a lot of your, uh, of your more powerful attacks for once you get the stagger. You wanna maybe make sure that you're managing your cooldowns properly so I can really unleash a lot of damage once, once she gets staggered do more damage, you know? Because after all of that, she's still <laughs> still got a lot of health left. She's actually winning this fight. But as it goes on, I sort of figure out the mechanics. How 
about that. The game basically gave me a free stagger. If I can go in here and punish her a little bit without, uh... Ah, whatever. Still can't get a lot of damage off on it. Clearly, she's still underestimating him, though. Even though she's unleashed more of her power and she's throwing stuff around, she seems to think that she has him defeated when she doesn't. <laughs> I wonder what it's going to take, because it seems as though that there's some sort of a test to identify a person as being a dominant, and I don't know what that is, but you'd think that these people would be able to sort of tell. If Clive was not able to tell Sid was, and Sid's not able to tell that Clive is, then Benedict is not able to tell that Clive is either. So it must not be some sort of, like, ability to sense the power or anything like that. I think with the ability to lift such huge rocks like that, one hit would have killed him. <laughs> but you know, video game logic. She has a lot of attacks, which, like big wind-ups, and then once, if you can make her miss, you have big opportunities to counterattack. So there's like this big thing where her giant claws come out of nowhere. If she misses with that, then you can get some good counterattacks like that right there. But it does seem like she does follow that up with another attack, so you want to go and dodge that one as well. And she's staggered again. Come on. Come on. Keep smacking her. A little bit more, come on. Portal saving a day thing one too many times here. I mean, trying to, I guess, to show like, oh, well, he's about to be killed, but Torgal saves the day, and Torgal's like the faithful companion and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you do that once, you don't do that twice. You do see that she's getting a little worse for wear. She's getting more angry and more desperate as this fight goes on. Oh, and her, oh, it's like a third phase in the fight, too. Her attacks have changed. Look at that, these claws are appearing all over the damn place. <laughs> Language too, girl. Come on. It's a Final Fantasy game. I guess there were like Sid and Barrett and Foul Mouth too. <laughs> Just seems a little bit weird and goofy the way that it's when it's being voiced. <laughs> as opposed to just being text. Oh wow, look at that. The scorpion. Get out of there. Get out of there, bro. A little help. Torgal can heal you a little bit. That's weird, isn't it? She's very mobile. A little difficult to track her down. You gotta sort of wait for her to attack you and then counterattack. Huh. <laughs> Down here. <laughs> My wounds, boy. 
Yeah, we're both almost dead. <laughs> Had there been another phase to this fight, I would have been fucked. <laughs> That attack is pretty powerful. It does a lot of damage. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Get out of there. Yeah, look how close I am to death here. One more phase and I definitely wouldn't have made it. Oh, staggered. That's all the opportunity I needed. 